What's up everybody, we back at it again with another Magnum Quest video and in this one I'm hoping, I'm praying we can get a quick 5-10 to 10 minute video. I really do try to make these videos in that range because that seems to be the average duration watched. So hopefully I can make it happen. Top 5 things you may not know, let's get it. In no particular order, coming in at number 1 is Idle Ladder Currency. Uh, how much is needed in order to get that Sir or Kato's copy at the end of the month or sooner? Once you are able to unlock the floating city ladder seen here, uh, you're going to be able to set up your three defenses. Just remember, if you aren't able to fill out three solid ones, focus on two because in order to successfully defend, uh, you need to win two out of the three fights. Um, as you increase your ranking, you're going to notice this number right here getting higher and higher, uh, referring to your idle currency per hour. The reason you want to aim for generally uh, 520 or more is because some months only have 30 days, um, some have 31, uh, and then you've got that oddball February with 28, sometimes 29, um, but I'm not going to be factoring in that one because, well, that month is weird. Now, because for the month of November, there's only 30 days, um, you're going to need at least 521 instead of 520 uh, per hour. 24 hours times 521 is going to be 12,504 ladder currency. Uh, you then times that by 30, you're going to get 375,120. Uh, if we go over to the ladder shop, you're going to see Kato Sir Sir needs 375,000. Another factor that's going to shorten the amount needed is Battlefield of the Gods. Um, if you have a strong guild or a strong guild member uh, who makes it to the top, at the end your guild gets a chest to pick from and you get a random amount of ladder currency. Now moving into number two. It's going to be regarding the various orders in this game. If you weren't aware of these orders, uh, let's look at the Trial Wanted order, which gives you Barrel plus Trial Currency. Um, if you see here, it's going to show you your order level. Sometimes it's a bit confusing to know what you're on. Um, as you level this up by completing the trial, uh, getting those Valor coins seen here, the rewards actually increase, but the value remains the same. Uh, these orders go up to level 5. Um, here's the difference between a level 1 trial wanted order and then a maxed out one which is going to be level 5. So as you can see the difference is actually quite big. At level 1 it's going to be netting you for the free version 9300 barrel. Uh, what you see on the screen right here is for the paid version and that's going to be giving you 62,000. Um, I won't be focusing on the trial coins or dragon shards. The gold chest of barrel um, will be additional as it's hard to calculate this as it's based off your chapter adventure progression um, for your idle rewards. While level 5, it's going to be netting you for the free version 19,700 barrel. Um, and then for the paid version, once again what you see on the screen, it's going to be 131,100 barrel. Um, so for the difference between level 1 and level 5, Totaling both the free version and the paid version, remember I'm not including the gold barrel chest, so it's going to be a little bit more. Um, at level 1, you're going to be getting 71,300 barrel, and then at level 5, you're going to be getting 150,800 barrel. That's going to end up being around a 212% value increase, give or take, um, at the same price. Um, it's a nice system that rewards players who continue to play. Um, however, the seasons are very long right now. Um, I do hope they change the duration to either make it shorter um, or increase the levels from 25. You're able to complete this order and the other I'll be talking about far too fast. Um, generally, I think it's going to take you roughly four months, give or take a couple weeks of playing to go from level one to level five. Jumping over to the ever popular hunter reward order uh, for getting star map resources. I kind of failed here and I didn't take a pick at level one but I'm assuming it's going to be a great value percentage increase like the last one. So at level 1, it's going to be netting you for the free version, 5,400 bronze, 600 silver, and no gold tokens. 50,000 lights of divinity and abyss. Um, I figured I'd mention this as it's going to be a huge bottleneck for you when you're working on your Sir Arcado star map. Um, 60 bronze, 15 silver, and then 5 gold chests of lights. From the paid version, as you can see from the screenshot, you're going to be getting 30,000 bronze, uh, 3,600 silver, and 450 gold tokens. Um, and then you're going to be getting 300,000 Lights of Divinity and Abyss, um, and then 350 bronze, 80 silver, and then 35 gold chests of lights. Um, so right away you're going to see the paid version has a significant advantage with those gold tokens and gold chests of lights. While level 5 is going to be netting you, I'm not going to bore you with the numbers, but you can see as I'm scrolling to the side, uh, the main thing is for the free version, you're going to be getting 12 gold chests of lights, and then for the paid version, you're going to be getting 50 gold chests of lights and then also 3000 gold tokens. Obviously, the thing that catches my eye is the dramatic increase of gold tokens from 450 to 3000. So then the difference between level one and level five, 
uh, totaling both the free version and the paid version. I'm only going to be focusing on the gold chest of lights and the tokens. At level 1, you're going to be getting 40 gold chests of lights and then 450 gold tokens. And then at level 5, totaling both, it's going to give you 62 gold chests of lights and then 3,000 gold tokens. That's going to end up being around a 624% value increase um, at the same price. Even better than the trial because star map, especially when getting into the gold tier, is very, very demanding. So if you're on the fence about buying one of these orders using your real money, um, you can wait a bit, whether that's a month, uh, two months, till you level up that specific order so you can get more bang for your buck. Uh, the rewards increase, but the price remains the same. Also for the hunter reward orders, one of the other reasons why I stockpile uh, my hunting actions, besides being a hoarder, is so when I finish the order, meaning unlock up to level 25, uh, you can see here the XP is stored, but when you reach that level 25, I can't remember how much extra you can store. I think I had around 10k, something like that, but it does get capped out. And no matter how many other hunter medallions you get, which is the XP needed uh, to progress, whether through your bounties or your hunting actions, it doesn't increase. So essentially you're wasting your opportunity to fast track this order when it actually does reset. What I actually started doing was saving all my silver and gold hunting actions and then only doing my bronze if I started acquiring too many. Um, the max you can hold is 99 and the rest go to your mail, but they do have an expiry date. Moving down to number three, uh, which is taking heroes to six stars or legendary and then taking off your magic list because the additional stats are very minimal. I do believe it's like a one or two percent stat increase each level. Um, if someone does know the exact amount, maybe you can leave a comment down below so others can see. And you're also able to do an additional five. If we actually go to the magic list, um, this is where you can reduce the hero pool in the game to 22 heroes. Instead, I believe it's 52. Um, that's a significant advantage and this wasn't always in the game. When you get a hero to legendary or six stars like this, um, if I were to ascend him further with a one star copy like this, the stats increase isn't a big deal. That's why it's better to remove the heroes you get to Legendary off your magic list and then put another hero. I do this and I recommend you to do this as well for two reasons. Uh, number one, they introduced the new occupational system recently, which if you didn't know, categorizes your heroes like Priest, Warrior, Guard, etc. If we click Priest, the heroes in here will gain these additional attribute bonuses. Um, plus each category gets a unique bonus, so like Priest gets Haste. Um, in order to get the points needed to level this up further to increase these stats, you need to ascend the hero scene here. Um, and then for number two, it helps you build a more fuller hero roster, which will help you in the faction dungeons. This is where you're gonna earn lots and lots of resources, gold, XP, gold dice, and then eventually dragon scales, which is very helpful and they're used for the dragon summons. So the reason I say to leave your DPS carry is because unlike say a support um, or heroes you don't use very often, any extra stats further gets you to those higher numbers. Um, so for example, in the Forest Faction, if I wanted to put Bill in my list, I wouldn't drop Fang, Ekra, or Winden because these are all my current potential DPS carry heroes. Instead, I would either remove Lillian or Ilya. And then moving down to number four, um, I see this all the time everywhere, Discord, Facebook, everywhere you can think of that the summons aren't working and I haven't got a gold hero in ages. There is a pity counter system in this game, so I'm just going to explain it once more because it can be a bit confusing. At the summon main screen, um, you're going to have two options. You have your summons and then your dragon summons, which unlock after 1540. Um, if we go into the dragon summons, the pity counter here is 60. What this means is after 59 summons, if you still haven't pulled your choice hero scene here, on the 60th, it's guaranteed to happen. So if you did five 10 times pulls, um, and in this example, Sir, on the next 10 times pull, Sir is guaranteed as it's going to be a part of the 60 pity counter. Moving over to the summons, um, each of these have separate counters, which I'm going to explain. Uh, regular summons, meaning this one, where you can use draw coupons or dragon shards, have a pity counter of 30. Um, it's the same idea as I explained with dragon summons. After 29 heroes, if no gold hero, the 30th summon is guaranteed. So that's three 10 times pulls, uh, guarantee one, unless of course you get one sooner. Um, and then that's going to reset the counter. Friendship summons do not have a pity counter. Um, you can click the information button to see the rates. Um, generally, I don't get my hopes up for these as it's a 2.5% chance at a gold hero. Um, and then finally, faction summons. This is where I see the most confusion. So faction summons also have a pity counter of 30. However, each faction has their own counter. Uh, what I mean by this is um, you can do 20 summons on wild, then change to, say, the fortress faction, but don't expect to get a gold hero on the 10 times pull. 
Um, even though that equals 30, each faction has separate counters. That means 30 for Fortress, 30 for Wild, 30 for Forest, etc. Um, you also can't mix and match, so faction with regular. So if you do a 10 times pull on Wild, and then you do 20 on regular summons, you may not get a gold hero. Um, and then finally, number five, save your chests or bags of barrel, XP, and gold until you're stuck in chapter adventure. And then when this does happen, and believe me it will, um, spend a little or whatever you need, barrel, XP, or gold, to get past this roadblock or progression wall uh, while keeping the rest until you're stuck next. Um, the reason I suggest doing this is because as you progress, if you read the description, it says the item can be used to grant you 6 hours in this example worth of idle rewards. Um, it's also not affected by VIP bonuses, so the further you can push uh, before getting stuck, the better value you're going to be getting. Same can be said about fast rewards. It's better to take those towards the end of the day before reset after you've done some chapter adventure pushing. However, if you're just plain old stuck on a stage and you know you're not going to be advancing, then you can just do this whenever. Maybe you did know some of these, maybe you knew all of these, um, or maybe you didn't know any because you're a new player. Either way, hopefully some of you can benefit from these as I tried to think of things I never knew that I thought would help out. Um, if you can think of any others, feel free to leave a comment down below so others from the Magnum Quest community can see. Um, it's always nice when players help each other out because that's what I feel gaming is all about. I'm currently working on the tier list videos, should have at least one of them out this week. Um, I did switch up the format a wee bit, but I think it's for the best and makes it easier to understand. Um, other solid videos that I have would be the Hero Spotlights, of course. They just take a lot of time because I really go into depth with them. Um, and then the Awakened Demons. So they are coming. I'm just working on cutting down my process time. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe for future videos. And stay tuned for the next one.